four, three, two, one. Lift up, close motion. All right, so slow. <laughs> wow. Well, today was truly historic, not only for Blue Origin, but for commercial space in general. On just its second launch of New Glenn, Blue Origin successfully landed its first stage booster named Never Tell Me the Odds, becoming the second company ever to land an orbital class rocket. Of course, the first company being SpaceX. That looks a little bit off nominal. I don't know. Well, no, that looks okay. And... Um... Oh my God! Is it gonna touch down? Touchdown! Yeah. It it kind of looks like it touched down. I wish we had a better view. Um, I think that's live. I think it's standing there. Holy! Shit. I think it did it. Wow! Oh my God. Wow. Okay. Blue Origin attempted to land the booster back in January, but that was not successful. And so today had a lot riding on the mission, not only to land the booster on a drone ship, but also, of course, to get the escapade payload successfully deployed and on the way to Mars. Now, if you watch a lot of SpaceX Falcon 9 launches, you may have noticed that Falcon 9 has four landing legs. New Glenn, on the other hand, has six landing legs, and the way that these boosters land on the drone ships is quite different. As Scott Manley asked on X, so is this some pyrotechnic to nail the legs to the deck? And you can see these little explosions, and someone named Zach commented they filed a patent for an energetic welding for the legs last year, likely this system. So we got to see that energetic welding in place, and no SpaceX does not weld their landing legs to their drone ship. So there's just one of the few differences that I noticed today. Also, of course, when we were waiting for for New Glenn to launch, people were commenting in my live stream, why is there this open flame or this fire in the background? And so that is a flame stack or a flare stack used to safely burn off excess flammable gases, specifically methane from the New Glenn rocket fuel system. And so Falcon 9 uses liquid oxygen and RP-1 or refined kerosene for both stages. New Glenn, on the other hand, uses liquid oxygen and and liquid methane for the first stage, and they use liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen on the second stage. Another really interesting thing that I noticed is that even though the payload was built by Rocket Lab, the Escapade payload, Blue Origin never mentioned Rocket Lab's name once during the live stream. So that is also pretty interesting. At least Rocket Lab did post launch. Escapade has left the launch pad with our twin spacecraft on board. We're on our way to Mars. Which, by the way, if you were wondering when will this get to Mars, it won't be for a while. Probably around September 2027. What's going to happen is Escapade is going to go hang out near Lagrange Point 2 or L2 for a while until it's finally ready to make its way to the Red Planet. Our soon-to-be NASA administrator, Jared Isaacman, was also watching, writing, damn, that was exciting. Congrats Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos, Dave Limp, and the NASA team on the Escapade launch and sticking the landing. And I have to admit, I was surprised that they were able to stick the landing uh, on a drone ship of all things only on the second try. Yes, people in the comments were saying, well, SpaceX has been doing this for a long time, but this is much harder to do on sea than on land. And it's not because I don't believe in Blue Origin, although many of you in the comments seemed not to believe that this would be possible. We had some real pessimism today but because it is just a hard thing to do. So I'm very happy for the team and it's a huge win for commercial space. And so in case you aren't familiar with what the point of Escapade is, let me just tell you a little summary. These two satellites will be taking a long winding trip to Mars. And this is the first flight for New Glenn with a customer payload on board. So a paying customer. And that's another difference, by the way, if we want to compare New Glenn and Starship for a second. New Glenn has now gone orbital twice and has had a paying customer and a successful payload deployment, 
whereas Starship is surprisingly still suborbital, but that won't last that long. And they have had some successful payload deployment tests, but they were just of Starlink simulator satellites or Starlink dummy satellites. So this mission is a big deal. As I mentioned, the twin escapade satellites will hang out at L2 or Lagrange Point 2. This is a cosmic balance point about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. And that's also where the James Webb Space Telescope resides currently. But they'll be using L2 as a place to hang out until they're ready in late 2026 when the next Mars transfer window opens to depart L2, swing back by Earth, and set off on their final trek to Mars. Both spacecraft are slated to enter Martian orbit in September 2027. And then the science will begin. According to CNN, this is led by the University of California, Berkeley, and the team of researchers will study Mars's atmosphere, working to evaluate why the red planet began to lose its once a dense atmosphere billions of years ago and assess radiation conditions for future explorers. Quote, throughout the escapade mission, the two satellites will take simultaneous measurements from nearly the planet's entire upper atmosphere and magnetosphere, ranging from altitudes between approximately 100 and 6,200 miles. Coordinated multi-point observations are necessary to unravel the chain of cause and effect within the system. The mission's cost was estimated to be less than $100 million, compared with the roughly 300 to 600 million price tags of other NASA satellites orbiting Mars. So once again, commercial space is the future, cheaper, more accessible, and the way to go. So there's the highlights for you. Thank you so much for watching this video and of course watching my live stream if you were also able to do that. I'm so happy for Blue Origin. Today was a great day and uh, I'm definitely team space. Hopefully you are too. And we will remember this day for a long time because as time goes on, there's going to be more and more launch providers that are able to recover their boosters. But now Blue Origin is officially the second launch provider to propulsively recover its booster. That's impressive. Wow, this is, oh my God, I'm so happy for them. That's amazing. Dude. That is <laughs> It actually is huge, both uh, physically and just uh, what they did. That is awesome. Oh, my God. I I don't think a lot of us were expecting that. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, they obviously solved the problem with lighting the engines up for the uh, entry. And... Oh, I'm so happy for them. Wow. Very, very cool. The second company, the second entity to ever land successfully an orbital class booster. And so congratulations, Joe and I were talking about it. The next new Glenn launch will probably not be until the spring. So savor this moment and I'll see you in the next video.